Today, we're going to be talking about the geometry of Gematria. This is a jam-packed and dense module, but after we go through this, this should really elevate your decoding prowess as it did mine as I was researching. There was so much more that came together as I finished this up, and hopefully this, you know, goes on to you. And I just have some really cool uh, Gematria decodes before we get into the uh, real uh, presentation, because maybe one day I can make this into a, a mathematics thesis paper and try to get a Fields Award or something like that. Uh, because I really feel like you can extrapolate on this knowledge even more, and um, this really could go into the mainstream, because it's math. And so I just have some really quick, cool Gematria decodes, right? Gematria, much like worded geometry, mathematics thesis paper will win a lot of awards, 333 English reduction. Then we have Gematria, much like worded geometry, mathematics thesis paper, D. Arthur Turner IB, 330 English reduction. So those are two um, uh, decodes that I, I have for myself. And, you know, hopefully that, that's forward look, looking to, uh, to where this uh, knowledge can go. All right. So keep that in mind. Maybe there's a mathematics thesis paper in the future for me. Before getting into the meat of the masterclass, I just want to go over some of the disclaimers and the notices. While I am calling this a masterclass, I am by no means a master. I've been decoding with Gematria for over three years, and I realize the more I learn and more I find out, the more I don't know. And so that's exciting because that keeps me in the student role. But as I continue to learn, I will continue to cast out uh, the knowledge I find out so it can help other people. And with that being said, I also learned from a, a lot of other uh, decoders within the Gematria community as well. So I'm going to give a shout out to, to some of the... Uh, uh, decoders that I follow and that I want to give some uh, shouts out to. Some of the talented decoders I want to give a shout out to, Decode or Cromara. He works with numerology, cultural esoterica. His YouTube channel is uh, Decode28. So go on YouTube and, uh, and su uh, support him. Subscribe to his channel. We did an interview uh, not too long ago and it was great. It was long. It was dense. It was jam-packed with a lot of information, with a lot of different perspectives. Uh, he's a really good dude, and uh, he would really love that support. Another one is Duke Doobie. He's an esoteric cryptocurrency uh, technical analysis trader. Uh, he's on Rumble. So if you have a Rumble account, go to uh, Rumble and uh, type in Duke Doobie, or go to his Twitter where his ad is Scrub Anon. So really good dude as well. He's in my Discord as well. Um, he's easy to get talked to. Um, and he does great work. You know, his, his work on Bitcoin, just masterful, right? Masterful. And then we also have Honest Abe 3, um, Abraham on uh, Discord as well. He's an es esoteric technical analysis trader, really good dude as well. And he's also on Rumble, Honest Abe with the three instead of the E. So those are the three uh, talented decoders I want to give a shout out to today. They do awesome work. They're in my community on the Discord, and they provide a lot of value. So, uh, you know, thank you to them, and uh, hopefully they continue to cast out some positive energy because the space still needs it. When diving into esoterica like Gematria, it's important, in my opinion, to have some pre-decoding pillars to almost live by to gain some perspective. All right, so I don't want to go over these before we get into the real meat. Everyone perceives the creator's code differently. Try not to judge or criticize someone's decoding method. If you feel as though they can improve to get more concise readings, be a teacher. We are all on the same team in trying to figure out our matrix and our creator's message. Awareness is the goal, not who is better at finding messages. Do not fit a square peg into a round hole. While decoding, use common sense. Have a systematic reason for the de decode you are deciphering. While the decode practices vary, it at least makes, must make logical sense to others who want to learn from it. Common and logical sense will help others absorb this knowledge better. Very important. We live in a world of polarity, so there are positive and negative charges on everything in this realm, including numbers. Sometimes the number 33, the master teacher number, gets a bad reputation because it's frequently used by the Freemasons and the world controllers. 
But as they are using it for quote unquote nefarious or bad purposes, it could be used for good as well, which I tend to do myself, which is my specific number. A positively charged 33 is good for humanity. I've taught that in many different ways over the years, and hopefully um, I keep reinforcing that because 33 is very important in my work. Okay, so the disclaimers, the pillars, and the notices are out the way. Let's get into the master class. So there is some prerequisite knowledge that I do encourage everyone to, uh, to study before, you know, getting into this module. All right. This is kind of complex information. And if you just have a good base of where I'm coming from, you'll be able to absorb the knowledge even better. So I did release an article on dataproductionsmedia.com going over the Colel rule and the parents of numbers rule, which really get into the flexibility of one and two in Gematria. This is the article right here. You can just go to dataproductionsmedia.com. It's a really quick read. Four minutes long, a quick read. There's some Gematria decodes on there, and it will really help, um, you know, boil down what I'm about to talk about because it's very dense. All right, so go and check out this article, learn a little bit, and then you'll be well equipped for what uh, is about to come when it comes to uh, the uh, ge uh, geometry side of things. Rule of Colel and parent of numbers, and number one and two are not numbers, both equal. 330 in English ordinal. That's that 33. Zero, just a value placeholder. Finally, the first slide within the module. Geometry in Gematria. Geometry is a branch of mathematics that deals with the measurement, properties, and relationships of points, lines, angles, surfaces, and solids. Broadly, the study of properties of given elements that remain invariant under specified transformations. This comes from Miriam Webster. You know, invariant means it doesn't change. Like these are rock hard principles within our matrix. Rock hard that doesn't change over anything. Okay. So keep that in mind. These are these are stout pillars. All right. Numbers are stout pillars. Okay. So Gematria connects with geometry equals 137 in reduction, the 33rd prime. Real simple, real easy, okay? Measurement, properties, and relationships of points, lines, angles, surfaces, and solids equals 330 in English reduction. That's powerful. 33, zero value placeholder. And then we have another powerful one. Geom uh, gematria, much like worded geometry, okay? How uh, gematria works, I found out, it's really similar to uh, geometry. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Those create shapes. Uh, we'll get into the monad, the dyad. It's all connected and all related, okay? So that's why gematria, much like worded geometry, equals 333 in English ordinal. Let's go over some of the terms in geometry that are very important. So a point, it's a dot, shows location, no size. You can consider that, that's one, you know, it's divine. A line is a straight path, extends in two opposite directions without end, contains infinite points. And in my opinion, a line is two, both ends, but that really gives us infinite polarity. Anything that happens on that line can be positive or negative. It's a mirror of each other. And then we have a plane. It's a flat surface, extends without end, contains infinite points. In my opinion, three in a plane, they're essentially the same thing. And we're going to get into how three creates the first shape, which means that is a plane and how we break through it with tangibility. And so you see there's a couple of uh, graphics here, a lot of points, a lot of lines. There's the plane. So definitely keep pause this video if you need to, to really just absorb everything that's happening here. But how I see it is a point is one, a line is two, and a plane is three in a sense when we break through it for tangibility and we're going to get into it. But here's the gematria and it kind of solidifies what I've been saying. One is a point. 
137 English ordinal, ordinal, the 33rd prime. Two points make a line, 222 English ordinal, a very powerful number. We understand how 222 is important. Breaking the plane creates three, also 222 in English ordinal. We also have geometry in the number two, both equaling 108 in English ordinal and uh, 45 in reduction. So you see there is a connection there. So if you again, if you have to pause the slide on the video to just absorb what this is, please do so because this is really the basis of life in the matrix in general. There is no life without one, two, or three. And it tells you within the gematria. Now let's get into how divinity transcends tangibility. More or less, the numbers one and two and how they are divine. Being divine means that you might not, might not be able to see it. You might not be able to physically touch it, but you feel it inside yourself. You know it's there. It's always with you. That's one and two. That's why you can use the rule of Kolel. That's why you can use the parent of numbers rule and you can cast those off because in a lot of senses, they're not real in the sense of physicality. And I have some good descriptions from the book Numbers, Their Occult Power and Mystic Virtues by uh, 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 William Wynn Westcott. After I was going through this research, I had to buy the book so I could learn more. I, you know, I encourage everybody to get this book as well because it's going to help you uh, formulate a better thesis on this knowledge. But here's some a couple of excerpts from this book. The number one or the monad has been defined by the mathematician Theon of Samira, Samira as the principal and element of numbers, which while multitude can be lessened by, subtra by subtraction, is itself deprived of every number and remains stable and firm. Let that sink in. Hence, as number, it is indivisible. It remains immutable. And even multiplied into itself remains itself only. It's whole. Since once one is still one, and the monad multiplied by the monad remains the immu immutable monad to infinity, it remains by itself among numbers, for no number can be taken from it or separated from its unity. That's highly important. The monad. Number one, it's it's whole. It's the whole collective. You can't you can't get more whole than that. All right. That's in a lot of senses is is God in itself, the creator in itself. All right. So let that sink in again. Pause the video if you have to to read that description again. Now, let's get into number two and its divine nature. First, it is the general opposite of the monad. It's the polarity. We're bringing polarity into the mix. The cause of a dis dissimilitude, the interval between multitude and the monad. Of figures, though, which are characterized by equality and sameness have relation to the monad. But those in which inequality and the difference predominate are allied to the dyad. Monad and dyad are also called bound and infinity. That's those. That's the monad dyad. One, two. Whole, then polarity. Whole, then mirror. All right. That's the essence of life. As above, so below. As within, so without. That's the essence of one and two, the divine. And so let's get into the gematria. Divinity transcends tangibility with the monad and dyad, 3,300 in Sumerian, 33. English Sumerian, a very ancient uh, gematria cipher. The numbers one and two produce form, which is number three, but isn't form themselves. Remember that. The numbers one and two produce form, which is number three, but isn't a form themselves. That's why they are parents of numbers. They together, one and two, create the form. They create the baby of tangibility, but they're not for themselves. They never broke the plane. They're just the line. There's no shape. Divine energy, one is a point, one is a parent, 
all equal 137 in English ordinal, while one is a point and one is a parent, both equal 56 in reduction. We have God, which equals 26 in English ordinal and 17 in reduction with parent of numbers, which equals 206 in English ordinal. Remember, cast off that zero, it's 26. So you see that connection. God, parents of numbers, 26. Highly important in the connection. But then we have that uh, 71 in reduction in the reverse. Because the parents of numbers, though in uh, many cases it symbolizes God, it's not God. So that's why you see that in reverse with the, uh, with the 17 and 71. Then we have divine, which equals 36 in reduction, 36 reverse reduction. Then we have no form equaling uh, 36 in reduction, reduction as well, but also equals 81 in English ordinal with the plane equaling 81 in ordinal and 36 in reduction and 36 in reverse reduction. So you're seeing all these connections there. Divinity and divine digit both equal 112 in English ordinal. The use of one and two. Those are the divine numbers. Those are the divine digits. One and two are not really numbers. And one and two birth tangible formation both equal 330 in English ordinal. 33. One and two in digits are formless and a number one seen as a zero in gematria, those both equal 333 in English ordinal. One and two in digits are formless. The number one seen as zero in gematria, 333. Powerful stuff. Very powerful. Formless, monad, and dyad equal 333 in reverse ordinal. And we have numbers that are formless in matrix and modad and dyad are formless within matrix, both equaling 380 in, uh, in English ordinal, which is at 38. Um, and with energy equals 38 in reduction. And we also have numbers that are formless in matrix, 137 in English uh, uh, reduction. And both of these as well equal 187 in the reverse reduction. So again, highly powerful. And we have numbers one and two eludes form. That equals 1,377, which can be seen as a big 137. And that's in English Sumerian. So right here, if you have to pause this uh, the, the slide again on the video, do so. Divinity transcends tangibility. Before getting into the last slide of the module, I want to let you guys know I do have a Patreon page where you can help support the channel. And I will be putting the PDF and Word uh, document form of the module on my Patreon for people who actually want a physical copy to print out or to continue to look back at. If you don't want to look at the YouTube video, that's going to be on my Patreon. But I say, if you want to support the channel and you like my Gematria stocks, what I do in the uh, Gematria stock community, I have a dividend portfolio we, uh, we monitor over $2,000 I have invested into, into it. I have a Gematria stocks newsletter. We have a monthly private call at the end of each month, at the, the last Sunday of each month where we get together, we have a conference call and I have a huge presentation on the things I'm looking at within the stock market. We talk crypto a little bit. And we make money. That's 100%. We make money. People can attest to that. And so if you want to join uh, the stock market financial portion of my community, that's only $5 a month. And you get so much, so much uh, uh, resources, a lot of uh, uh, knowledge to help you in your decoding journey. It happens everywhere within the stock market. And that gives us that edge. Say if you like my sports content, I do have monthly sports documentaries chock full of Gematria decodes. It's uncensored because it's too real for YouTube. Each month, I drop a new sports documentary and they're always bangers. Right now, on my Vimeo, I have over 24, 24 uh, 30 minute long documentaries. So much knowledge in these. And when I get to the 33 uh, video mark, I'm gonna be compiling all of them together and I'm gonna be making, um, I guess like a, a premium cassette 
package, much like ESPN 30 for 30. Um, and I'm going to try to sell that. But if you just for five dollars a month, you can get all access to all 24 of my monthly sports documentaries. Highly valuable. It's great inter entertainment and you learn something. But say if you like both my Dramatria stocks newsletters with my private call and my monthly sports documentaries for only eight dollars and sixty three cents a month. That's a dollar uh, thirty seven discount. The thirty third prime. You can get my Dream Schemers Ultimate Woke Pack where you get both of these. That's a really good value, um, and you know I think it's really worth it. Um, if you really want to learn about this knowledge, you want to see how the sports world works, you want to see how the stock market works, and make money. That's the one you want to get. So that's my Patreon, and please, if you uh, if you want to help support, that's where you can. Um, I have other YouTube channels as well. I have the Sports Vault, ESPN number one, ESPN Enemy number one. This is a strictly sports channel. No Gematria decodes on here, but it's still conspiracy based. YouTube doesn't really like the Gematria, so I took all my videos I've done in the past, cut the Gematria out, but it still holds a lot of value and a lot of entertainment. So many videos on here. We have 38 videos so far, um, and that's just another way where you can help support the growth of data productions media as a whole. Now, for the people who enjoy the stock market, and want to get some uh, little tidbits here and there, I have a new channel called Stock Market Gematria with Data Capital Investment. I have so many mini clips up here on just like different, you know, money nuggets that you can go through. I talk about different uh, stocks in the past. I go over different money concepts. Um, I drop clips for my, my conference calls, my monthly conference calls on here as well. And so if you want to make money, and you don't necessarily want to join my Patreon for some reason, you can still go here and you can learn a lot. A lot of value here, a lot of different concepts, crypto, stock market, technical analysis, fundamental analysis, um, so much, so much knowledge here. So please uh, subscribe to either one of these or both, Stock Market with Gematria with Data Capital Investment, The Sports Vaults, ESPN number one. Another opportunity to get within the community is my Discord. That's going to be in the link in the description below. All the links are in the, uh, the uh, description or comment section below. Um, it's a free Discord. Amazing community. Over 300 people are in it. And we talk all the time. Gematria, stocks, life, spirituality, conspiracies, music, whatever. It's really open-ended. Um, but it's just a great group of people. And you can, you can join. It's free. And I want you to be a part of it so we can communicate together as one. And so uh, that's all the plugs I have. Let's get back to this last slide and finish up the video. Breaking the plane to tangibility, the triangle. Photius observes that the triad is the first odd number in energy. It is the first perfect number and is a middle and analogy. The Pythagoreans referred it to physiology. It is the cause of all that has the triple dimension. The 3D realm. It's the first number that we have within the 3D realm. Tangibility. Very important. It is also the cause of good counsel, intelligence, and knowledge. It is a mistress of music, mistress also of ge geometry, possesses authority in whatever pertains to astronomy, and the nature and knowledge of the heavenly bodies. Connects and leads them into effects. Every virtue also is suspended from it and proceeds from it. In every zodiacal sign, also there are three faces, three decans, and three lords of their triplicity. And among the planets, there are three fortunes, three infortunes, according to the Chaldean, and according to the Chaldeans also, there are three ethereal words prior to the sphere, spheres of our fixed stars. The triad, the number three, so important. It creates the triangle, the first tangibility, as you see here. There's a triangle. You need three points to make the tangibility. That's the good counsel. All right. And so look, thirds, a third, and three points all equal 33 in English reduction. How much more do I need to go? That's so simple right there. Thirds, a third, three points, 33 English reduction. That's easy enough, guys. 
but we can always go further. Triads are the first formations. Earth's third dimension is tangible. Breaking plane to enter the matrix. And a triad formation means a broken plane. All equal 330 in English ordinal. 33 is telling you guys right there. We also have third point and a triad is formed equaling 133 in English ordinal. We're going to use the parent of number rule. Just cast that out. You have that 33, much like that zero. And third point equals 137 in reverse ordinal. We have triangles is earthly formation. And three is the Earth's first number, both equaling 333 in English ordinal and 135 in English reduction. Triangles is earthly formation. Three is the Earth's first number. You see that. And we have divine energy and breaking of a plane, both equaling 137 in English ordinal and 74 in English reduction. And for the definition of a plane, in geometry, a plane is a flat surface of two dimensions. It extends endlessly and has no thickness. You can think of a piece of paper or a surface of a wall as part of a, geometric, uh, a geometric plane. The flat surfaces in plane geometry are known as plane surfaces. And so we get tangibility and we get life. We get life when breaking through, all right? And so in the next module, I'll get into four, five, six, you know, when the arena is really made. And that's when you break through. Tangibility is had with three, but when, when do you actually get life? That's four, and that's when you get through it, all right? That's when you get that, that flat surface, and that's when you get that fourth dimension. It creates the arena. It creates when you can move around. It creates the matrix, right? So that's what we're going to have in our next module whenever I do that. We'll get into the, the extra numbers. Um, but here's just the bibliography, a couple of the, uh, the, the links I used. That's all I had for the module today. Uh, it's a lot of dense information, and I don't want to, uh, you know, over overload you guys with with all this. So please keep going through this video. Stop it if you have to stop it to look at it. Um, you know, if you need the printout, you can just go to my Patreon. You can get that uh, that printout really easily. That's going to be on my uh, my tier for uh, three bucks, uh, three dollars and thirty three cents. And so just go over it all. I hopefully you guys learned something from here. Um, and, and go back to the, the article, okay? Um, but that's all I have. Art Turner, Data Productions Media, Dreams Are Tangible Aspirations, where we scheme our dreams into existence. I love you all, and I'll see you in the next video.